Hello, and welcome back to Radiography Simplified. This is Michael. We've come quite a long way on the radiobiology series. In this section, we kick back to high school biology by discussing the cell cycle and how it relates to radiation biology. Now, to keep things simple and relevant to radiation biology, we won't go too much into the core biology stuff. Instead, we'll focus on terms that you're more likely to come across in the field of radiation biology. According to biologists, the human body is made of two types of cells, the genetic and somatic cells. The genetic cells include cells responsible for producing offspring such as the spermatogonia in males and ogonia in females. All other cells of the body are somatic cells. Genetic cells reproduce through a process called meiosis. Somatic cells reproduce through a process called mitosis. We'll focus the conversation on mitosis to keep things simplified. In mitosis, the cell divides into new cells. Think of mitosis as having four phases or stages. First is the prophase, then the metaphase, then the anaphase, then the telophase. There is also a resting phase that occurs before and after each round of mitosis. This is called the interphase, and in this phase, the cell does not divide yet. It only prepares for the actual cell division by getting everything it needs ready. The interphase also has its subphases, called the gap 1, synthesis, and gap 2 phases. So, one way to think about it is, the interphase happens, then mitosis, then interphase again, then mitosis again, and it goes on and on like that. Now let's analyze these steps one by one. We start out with gap 1. This is a gap phase that occurs between the last round of mitosis and the synthesis phase. In this phase, the cell grows in size and synthesizes proteins that would be useful during the proper mitotic phase. Next is the DNA synthesis phase. In this phase, the DNA molecule of the cell replicates into two identical molecules. This process ends with the cell having two pairs of chromatids that are completely identical. Next up, the gap two phase. This phase occurs immediately after the DNA synthesis phase and just before another round of mitosis. Similar to gap one, the gap two phase is characterized by rapid cell growth and protein synthesis. Now we enter into the core processes of cell division. You must take note that one key difference between the interphase and proper mitosis is that while the chromosomes are invisible during the interphase, they are seen microscopically during mitosis. The first proper phase of mitosis is the prophase. In the prophase, the nucleus of the cell gets much bigger in size. Now the DNA is normally tightly packed into structures called chromosomes. In the prophase, the nuclear membrane that surrounds the DNA breaks down, allowing the chromosomes to loosen up and move freely within the cell. This helps the DNA to become prominent and take a structural form. Next up, metaphase. In this phase, the chromosomes line up along the middle or equator of the nucleus. By lining up like this, the cell kind of makes sure that when the cell does split, each new cell will receive an equal and complete set of chromosomes. Now it's time to split. In the anaphase, the pair of chromosomes separate and are pulled apart by special protein structures called spindle fibers. Each split chromosome starts to move towards each opposite end of the cell. And finally, the telophase. Here, the chromosomes reach each opposite end of the cell. A nuclear membrane starts to reform around each set of chromosomes. Then, a process called cytokinesis happens. Cytokinesis is so important that some texts consider it a fifth stage of mitosis altogether. During cytokinesis, the cell physically divides into two daughter cells. This completes cell division, with each daughter cell having the same set of chromosomes as the parent cell. Now let's track back to radiation biology. The reason we went over these steps of mitosis is because the cell possesses different degrees of radiosensitivity at different phases of mitosis. The cells are most radiosensitive during the late parts of gap 2 and during the proper metatic phase when the cell is actively trying to divide. The cell is least sensitive during the synthesis phase when the cell is not dividing but is instead preparing for mitosis. Now we round this segment off by sharing with you a really cool law that sums up everything we've been talking about. It's called the law of Bergoni and Tribondo. It states that the radiosensitivity of cells depends on the stage and rate of cell division and its degree of differentiation. We can infer three things from this law. 
First, cells are more radiosensitive when they are actively participating in mitosis compared to when they are in a resting state. Secondly, cells that divide rapidly are more radiosensitive than cells that do not divide at all. This is why the nerve cells in an adult are extremely radio resistant because they do not really divide. And on the other hand, cells of the testes are radio sensitive because they divide a lot. Thirdly, undifferentiated cells are more radio sensitive than differentiated cells. That concludes our discussion on the cell cycle and how it relates to radiation biology. See you next time.